Welcome everyone to the latest episode of Jim and Java. Well, welcome everyone to this episode of Jim and Java. Our channel, Development Effectiveness Strategies, is designed to help nonprofit leaders in the area of fundraising and development. And our goal is to increase income and help you become fully funded. And this question and answer time for Jim and Java is designed to answer your fundraising questions. So let's get down to our first question. Our first question today is from Matt in Wheaton, Illinois. And Matt asks, what do you think of experience parties, such as wine tasting, chef experiences, ballroom dance class, etc.? Well, Matt, any time we can do anything with our donors and our partners is always a very, very positive experience. Um, the one question I would have to ask is that if we are going to do something or offer something for our partners, is it going to be related to the mission of our organization? Because I think it's really important that if we're going to spend money on a large scale basis to do something with our partners, that we make sure that we somehow weave in there the mission, vision, value values of our organization. So in other words, if your organization is a an organization that reaches young people, that are there some things that we can do, some experiences that will tie in with our programs and our efforts. So I, I don't know how we would be able to weave in something like a ballroom dance. Now, if you did a wine experience, as you said, um, certainly you could have wine tasting and then a, a short program afterwards featuring your kids and some of the things that you're doing. But I think it's just very important that no matter what we do, that the activity relates to our mission, vision, values. They can go out and play miniature golf with just about anyone and I'm don't get me wrong I think it's very important that you would take a partner a donor out for a round of golf that personal interaction is so important but I think if you're going to do a large-scale golf event as an example that a portion of that either at lunch or at dinner after the golf outing features some of the activities and programs and things that you do. So uh, hopefully, Matt, that that answered your question and that you have a, a good, uh, that gave you a good understanding of what kinds of things I would recommend from that standpoint. All right, well, our second question today is from Brian in Orlando, Florida. And Brian asks, do you have any tips on clarifying giving intentions? And reading between the lines uh, didn't have enough time and space to to put in this video, uh, Brian outlined some examples of where somebody had given a gift and he didn't feel like he did a good enough job of clarifying what the amount of money that the partner intended to give. So Brian, what I would say is first, any time uh, we're meeting with someone or talking with someone on the phone or in this day and age on Zooms, uh, as excited as we get by someone saying, I'll help you on a monthly basis and I'll help you with a single gift of or an annual gift of, especially if that amount is larger than we expected, uh, we still have to temper our enthusiasm and still complete the transaction, complete all the elements related to that. And what I mean by that is not just giving getting the yes, but finding out how do they intend to send that money? Will that be monthly? Will it be annually? Will it be every, every quarter? Or will it be a single gift, uh, sometimes referred to as a one-time gift? But uh, you've got to clarify that. Then you want to clarify what's the amount? What's the intention? Is it going to be $50 a month? Is it going to be $600 a year? And will that come in single monthly gifts? Will that come in, uh, in, in quarterly? How will that $600 come? And then you've got to also find out in what form will that come? So in other words, will that come in checks through the mail? And will that check be sent to you? Will it be sent to your organization? Those are all important. Or will they do an electronic fund transfer, a bank draft, or will they use a credit card? All those things are very important when determining that. And I can't tell you how often I hear of individuals getting very excited about the gift and forgetting about those things. And of course, I also have to remind you 
that it's so important to get a referral even if someone says yes or even if someone says no you need to get a referral from that person certainly if they were excited about being part of giving to your organization um, they are probably going to be likely to give you a list of names of their friends and again I always recommend saying if you are in my position looking for people which of your friends or who would you go to first to reach out to those people and, uh, and, and ask them to be part of this. So that's part of the process. But honestly, even if they say no, giving you some names of their friends actually is a really, really good way for them to feel like they at least did something. They couldn't give you any money, uh, but they at least could give you the names of their friends. And I can't tell you how often people who said no and gave me the name of their friends, how often that happens. We have a couple that are helping us. They are into their 36th year helping us, and they came from a referral from an individual who said no to us. And so you never know what's going to happen. But Brian, clearly defining the giving intentions, clearly defining all the different methods, the ways that they intend to give, uh, that's very important because honestly, Brian, it's so much better to do it then. It's so much better to do it in a non-threatening way at the very end of that time when they're excited rather than having to call time and time again trying to get either another meeting, a phone call, or appointment with them to clarify what did you mean and when will you be sending your first gift always better if you can get that first gift from them and clarify their intentions rather than that awkwardness that you stated in your uh, email to me was that that it, it now caused an awkward situation where you had to circle back and and it is awkward when you have to call back to those people so hopefully Brian that helped and uh, I appreciate your questions well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of this broadcast for Jim and Java. Once again, we would love to have you as a subscriber to our channel. Our goal is to increase income and help you get fully funded. If you've got questions for Jim and Java, certainly go out to Twitter at DevFStrats and use the hashtag Jim and Java. If you prefer sending an email to me, uh, just use developmenteffectivenessm at gmail.com. And as I always say, I want to help you increase income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thank you. Mm -hmm.